turn our attention here at BronxNet to spring training. Although the winter weather here in the Big Apple is starting to turn the corner, how can we not be excited to talk America's pastime at some of the best of the best headlines from the Sunshine State, sunny Florida? Position players made their way to spring training this week, and the game schedule opens this weekend for both the Yankees and Mets. The Pinstripers begin the 2021 season with Toronto Sunday, and the Mets play the Marlins Monday in spring training action. Yankee slugger Aaron Judge says his new off-season routine, which includes yoga, he hopes will keep him in the starting lineup more. I think it's going to make big adjustments, you know, um, you know, especially a lot of the movement stuff that he has us doing, you know, a lot of stuff with med balls, you know, just getting those explosive movements. I feel like that's where a lot of the things happen are with those quick, you know, kind of explosive movements. So uh, just train a little bit more with that and, uh, you know, a little less, you know, straight bench press and, and squat, um, you know, I think is, is going to help out. Meanwhile, ace Garrett Cole checks in on how he's progressing on the mound. Yeah, I'm feeling great. Um, right on track. Ball was coming out um, pretty good yesterday. Um, not enough strikes, but it's okay. Uh, bounced back really well today, and so looking forward to the next one. The longest tenured Yankee will be back in the Bronx this season, but he's not starting in his familiar spot. Brett Gardner and the Pinstripers finalize a $5.15 million one-year contract for the outfielder to return for a 14th season. New York also finalizes its deal with left-hander Justin Wilson on Tuesday that could also be worth $5.15 million for two seasons. He joins a camp that includes former Yanks reliever Adam Warren. The 33-year-old relief pitcher is back for his third stint with the team. He hasn't pitched since 2019 when he was with the San Diego Padres. Ever since then, he has been recovering from Tommy John surgery. He signed a minor league deal with the Yankees to rehab in 2020 before re-signing a minor league deal in the offseason. As for Guardy, manager Aaron Boone says that for now, Clint Frazier is projected over Gardner in left field in an outfield that has Aaron Hicks in center and Aaron Judge in right. Meantime, the Mets are beyond excited about their roster adjustments. Here's manager Luis Rojas on tapping into that potential. We're a very, t a very talented group of guys. Uh, that's you know we have here in camp. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we're we're the best team out there you know that's something that gradually we got to get to um you know the talented group of guys uh, working together um as a team is what is going to make that new star francisco lindor is adjusting himself to the mets it's fun to be around the guys to see what everybody's got and the work that they got been seeing from the guys have, have been really really good you know i the only thing that makes you want to do is elevate your game and get better. Um, like I said earlier, um, I have heard nothing but good things about this group of guys, and I just want to be a, a piece of their, their puzzle. Electrifying shortstop Fernando Tatis Jr. steals the biggest headlines from the baseball world this week. The Padres' young star inks a $340 million 14-year contract, the longest in baseball history. Biggest headline here in the Big Apple is the limited return of fans to Madison Square Garden and the Barclays Center. The Knicks welcomed the first fans on Tuesday night when they played host to Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. You know, just to have, you know, fans back, uh, the amount we can have back, and just to have their love and support, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be, uh, you know, something that will be good to be a part of. Uh, it's definitely been different without having them, uh, you know, on a game-to-game -game basis when we play, so it's been tough, but. It'll be great to have him back. Uh, it'll be great to have my son and my, and my wife back in the building, uh, you know, to watch watch us live. So uh, it'll be a good it'll be a good night for sure. Randall gets the All Star reserve after all, and so does Brooklyn's James Harden, who has the Nets cooking in the East. That includes a nice win over the reigning champ L.A. Lakers. Harden is named Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Here's the latest from Brooklyn. You know, each guy's been locked in. Uh, we've, been, we've had so many, well, a few, you know, guys in and out lineups or, or whatnot, but the next man up and the next man ready to go. Um, you know, obviously Jeff TLC was out tonight, but, you know, just guys came in and, and was prepared and, and played big minutes and, you know, they stepped up. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. Legendary golfer Tiger Woods is recovering from serious injuries to both his legs after a single vehicle rollover crash Tuesday morning near Los Angeles. Woods' 2021 Genesis was 
going downhill on a winding road that crossed the median before crashing into a curb and overturning into a wooded area. Neighbors called 911 about the crash at 7.12 a.m. local time. The airbags in the vehicle deployed and Woods was wearing a seatbelt. The sheriff's department says that likely saved his life. It appears that Woods' vehicle was going at a relatively greater speed than it should have. Never a dull moment when it comes to Tiger. We do wish him a quick recovery. The intent of the assault allegations levied against Ranger star Artemi Panarin without a shred of supporting evidence or corroborating witnesses by his former KHL coach in an interview with a Russian tabloid appears to have been to sully the reputation of the Broadway Blue Shirts winger and to promote both a personal and political agenda, not for justice. Panarin unequivocally and vehemently denies the charge that he punched an 18-year-old woman down to the floor in a hotel bar following a game in December 2011. He's not with the Rangers and may not be back soon. He has taken a leave of absence from the team. In motorsport, ex-Formula One driver Roman Grosjean says he's really happy with his first morning of testing at IndyCar. Despite spinning off and feeling soreness in his arms and recovering from a burnt left hand that he suffered in a near-death F1 accident this past season. Grosjean's first NTT IndyCar Series test with the Frenchman's new number 51 Dale Coyne Racing took place Tuesday afternoon. Here's more. It really felt like you know, home at the beginning. Obviously, it's a new car, so I just had to adjust a little bit to my new driving position and so on. But things um, very quickly felt quite smooth, which was uh, good. And then uh, I discovered the joy of not having a power steering wheel. IndyCar about 50 days away from getting back to racing. NASCAR, meanwhile, swung into week number two on the schedule. Who had Michael McDowell and Christopher Bell winning the first two races of the season? Last time the Cup season opened with two first-time winners was 1950. Bell, not known as a road racer, showed his medal in chasing down Joey Logano and getting by the former cup champ to win on Daytona's road course this past weekend. Gotta love racing, baby. Gotta love it. And you have to love what the UConn women's basketball team is doing on the college hardwood. UConn remains the number one team in the Associated Press women's college basketball poll after blowing out its two opponents last week. The Huskies received 28 of 30 first place votes Monday from a media panel after holding St. John's and Xavier to 32 points apiece in routes, the number one team in the country. That has a nice ring to it. On a final sports roundup note, shout out to the Bronx's own Malachi Smith out of St. Ray's. He earns a McDonald's All-American nomination despite not making the final cut. Unfortunately, even those that do won't be playing in a game this year due to COVID-19. Still, a big deal to be in the mix for that honor. Congrats, Malachi. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for some praise for a female athlete that deserves plenty. From becoming the third player in the Open Era to win their first four major finals to staying perfect once she reaches the quarterfinals, Naomi Osaka just keeps piling on the numbers and rolling in the world of tennis. With a 6-4, 6-3 victory over Jennifer Brady in the Australian Open last Saturday, Osaka captures her fourth Grand Slam title and etches her name even deeper into the history books. She's the seventh active player, male or female, to have four Grand Slam titles. She's the fourth female active player after Serena Williams, Venus Williams, and Kim Clijsters, and the seventh overall if you include Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, and Novak Djokovic. Do you hear those names? She's just the third player in the open era, male or female, to win their first four major finals. We need fans back at the U.S. Open in New York later this summer to witness more of her greatness. I think Serena is the best I've ever seen, but Osaka is challenging her for that spot, especially right now in the game today. Enjoy what you're watching. It's been special and all the more reason why we need fans at matches in 2021 if COVID-19 decides to let up or if the vaccine does what it's supposed to do. Fingers crossed. Congrats to her on a special Australian Open run. I'm Bobby C. Stay tuned for more Open.